In this video, I'm going to demonstrate seven exercises that you can do if your neck is feeling painful or stiff from working too many hours at your computer. However, the research shows that actually exercises on their own is not that effective to help neck pain from working at a desk. So I'll first share some other tips that you can think about to include with your exercises to give and get even better results. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mareika. I'm one of the physiotherapists from sportsinjuryphysio.com, where you can get online physiotherapy assessment as well as treatment for your injuries. Have a look at the description of this video if you want a link to our website. So what the research is showing is that exercises for neck pain can make a difference, but only if it's combined with other strategies to also help decrease your pain while you're sitting at the desk. So what other things can you do? Well, the first is you have to take regular breaks. The problem with sitting there for hours and hours and hours is all your muscles have to contract in the same way the whole time. So you're getting a decrease in circulation and that just tires them out and makes them really uncomfortable after time. And that's why they often go into spasm as well. So the best way that you can, the first step you can take is take regular breaks. So an idea for that is split the exercises that I'm gonna show you up and do active breaks that you actually move the part that needs to relax in that little break that you're taking. And they don't have to be long, long breaks. You'll see that most of the exercises can be done, with, done within two minutes. So see what you can do there. The second thing is that your desk and your chair setup has to be correct. If you're having to look down quite a lot while you're doing it, or you're having to look at an angle while you're typing, that's gonna cause trouble. Now, I am planning on making a video about that, but I've already written an article with examples of how the perfect desk setup and everything should be. So if you're interested in that, I've put a link to that article in the description of this video. Then thirdly, you shouldn't just include stretches for your neck pain, but also strengthening exercises. Why? I know stretching feels really good while you're doing it and is brilliant at reducing muscle spasm, but the benefit of doing strengthening exercises where you're actually asking the muscles to contract is that they are much better at improving circulation and blood flow. So they're better at decreasing the pain and getting the muscles to relax because it's actually getting the blood flow that it needs. But then also, by strengthening your muscles, you're improving their endurance so they can actually maintain that position for longer. So I'll demonstrate two strengthening exercises that's quite simple that you can do in your breaks even. And then lastly, I want you to consider taking up a sport or an activity that actually uses your upper body in your free time. Now, it can be swimming, it can be rowing, it can be things like even wall climbing. Anything where you have to move your upper body. Pilates can work, yoga can work. Anything where it's not just your lower body. So going for a walk is really good for your heart, but it doesn't do anything for the upper body. So think a bit about what type of activity appeals to you and choose something that you may actually enjoy while you're doing it. I call this exercise my double chin stretch. So it's basically looking as if, you know when you look in the mirror and go, how much weight did I gain on holiday? and you look at your double chin, that's the movement you're gonna do. So find somewhere where somebody can't see you because it's not the most attractive move you're doing. But it's a brilliant exercise for anybody with neck pain, not just from computer-related neck pain, because what it does is it opens your joints at the back and just gives everything good breathing space. It is also one of the few exercises that actually gets to stretch the little muscles that's between your neck uh, vertebrae, but, because it really targets the neck, you do not want to push too hard. The most common mistake I see people make with this one is they force it and go as hard as they can, and then they overstretch and it hurts more. So you're taking it to where you first feel the re resistance. Okay, so what do you do? You've got your feet far away from the wall, far enough, about that far, that you can get your lower back semi-flat against the wall. Your knees are slightly bent. So it doesn't have to be super flat your lower back. It just, it's okay if your hand can fit in there. It must just not come away as you do the upper back. So that's where we start. And you're gently contracting your tummy muscles to stop that movement being too rough. Then what we're gonna do is you're gonna try or you're gonna get your upper back against the wall. I'll tell you in a minute what you can do if it doesn't wanna fit there. 
and you're going to place the back of your head against the wall. Now at this point, you may look like this when you do that. That's okay. So in that position, you're tightening this. Now you slowly start to do the double chin, pushing your, your chin straight back. And as it goes back, your head slides up against the wall. And you do it until you feel a gentle stretch, either in your upper back or in your neck. And you hold it there for you. Now, what if your upper back is so tight that you can't actually get your head there? You look like that. Use a towel. So, up. You use whatever you need that's big enough that you can get your head against it in that position that you, works for you. And then there, you start by doing that motion. Okay. So imagine that was there. I would need a much um, bigger roll to put in there, but you do need a reference point and then you can start stretching it. Hold it for short periods of time. So you're holding a gentle stretch for 10 seconds, rest for 10 seconds, move your head a bit and do it. Start with six times, do it up to 10 times in one go. It can really make a difference, but you don't want to overstretch. Next, we've got the pec stretch. Now I'm going to show you two positions for that and I count them as two different exercises because it can feel a bit much to do it all in one go, but you can also lump them together. So the first version is for your pectoralis minor. Now your pec muscles run over the front of your chest. Pec minor runs more in this angle, pec major runs more in that angle. Why do we want to stretch them? Because they are the guys that get tight when your shoulders roll forward. So if we stretch them, you can actually get your shoulders backwards. And that's why it's also a good exercise to do before you go into the rows that I'm going to show you in a minute. So for the back stretch, you want a wall, you want a door, anything where you can just catch your hand. Now, the first step is to bring your arm out to about 90 degrees, elbow 90 degrees, and I'm going to catch it on my door. And then at the moment, I'm not feeling any stretch. If you feel something uncomfortable already in your shoulder there, move your arm slightly down, find a position that's comfortable. And now in this position, I'm turning my body away. I'm going to put it at 90 because that's where I stretch best. And I'm turning my body away until I'm starting to feel a stretch over the front. That's where I hold it. And I hold it for up to 30 seconds, come out, move it again. I prefer to then stretch the other side. You can do it repetitively on one side, but you have to move in between and you can do it two to three times in one go. Second type of pec stretch is for your pec major. And to stretch that, you just want to move your arm slightly higher up. So we're getting there and you can see how it's going to stretch those fibers now. So again, we're catching the arm there and then we're just turning our bodies away until you feel a nice stretch there. Shouldn't be hurting your shoulder. If something's pinching in the shoulder, you may want to speak to a physio and get a different type of exercise to do because then it will likely make that pinch feel worse afterwards. This exercise works a little bit better if you've got a chair that's more upright than mine, but this one will work as well. Why I like it is it reverses the position that you're in all day. So we're going to extend the upper back. It is also useful depending on how tall your body is to use different types of chairs. So if your one that you're working at is coming up really nice and high to support your back, it may not be the best chair for this. So find a dining room chair. So all you do, is you place your arms behind your head gently in this position, open your arms as far as they want to go, use the back of the chair as a guide and you just extend over it and you hold it for a few seconds and come back and you do a few repetitions. Now, it's always kind of that feeling of a stretch that feels comfortable. So people are inclined to just want to stay there and just do it two or three repetitions. Thing is, if you move a joint repetitively, and remember our back is made up of lots of little joints um, at all the levels, moving a joint repetitively actually improves its circulation better and that decreases discomfort and makes it a healthier joint. So actually, rather than just doing two or three long stretches in there, you can do that as well, but add in several, several small movements that you just go, you don't push it to the very, very extreme but you just kind of have a nice rhythm and you're supporting your head with that. So I would do about 10 of the quick ones, rest a bit, do three sets. And then if you feel you still need longer stretching, 
you can do two or three holding it for 10 to 20 seconds or even longer if you want to. Um, but yeah, if you've got a chair that is slightly lower even, you can go even lower and just target that area that it's more the very upper back um, where you've got it. So play with where's the best place for you. The next exercise I name smell under your armpit. <laughs> I know it sounds weird, but that's exactly the movement you want to be doing. And it actually stretches one of the main muscles that's usually a culprit for neck pain, especially if you're feeling your neck is painful in this area, it's usually the levator scapular muscle. Now, how do you do it? Well, think about where your armpit is, it's there. So you want to take your, your neck into that position. But you first of all want to sit on your hand. Why are we sitting on our hands? Because it stops your shoulder blade from coming up as you do that. So you're sitting on one hand, then you start by turning your nose to the side and then in that position you're taking it down to your um, diagonally down. Now I'm not doing that, I'm taking it in a straight line down. So and then if I'm there I turn it even a little bit more if I think that's where I want it. Now you don't want to let your um, shoulder come up to your, um, to your ear, you want to keep it down. And it may be enough to just sit in that position and not actually stretch it further than that. But if you don't really feel much of a stretch, you can also just place your hand on it and pull it in that same direction. So I'm not pulling it to the side, I'm pulling it diagonally to under my armpit. Also, if you're going to slouch while you're doing it, you're not gonna feel much of a stretch. So you have to start by sitting nice and upright, keeping the shoulder down and then doing that position. How long do you want to hold it for? It really depends on how sensitive your, your neck is. I'm on the flexible side and if I hold neck stretches for too long, it can actually irritate my neck. So what I tend to do is I hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds, come out of it, move a bit, and then I repeat it. But if you, like my partner, who is really immobile, is so stiff, he has to hold it for quite a long time, so 20 to 30 seconds, and move around and then go back into it to feel any result. You obviously also want to repeat it to the other side. So I usually end up doing one to this side, one to that side and repeat it to both, um, doing two to three repetitions. Another muscle group that can be a culprit for neck pain is this upper trap. So if you're finding you're sitting and doing this the whole time, it's likely your upper traps that's, that's painful. Now, we stretch the upper traps straight when we take our head straight over to the side. You want to sit on your hand just so that your shoulder doesn't come up and start by just, again we're not slouching because then you're not going to feel it and it's going to be awkward. You're sitting up nice and straight and just start by hanging your ear towards your shoulder. For me, again that's enough of a stretch already because I can really feel it pulling tight and you don't want to force neck stretches. So I would just sat, sit in that position for several seconds and then come out. But if you don't feel that much of a stretch, you can use your opposite hand to pull it across. So again, we're in that position, ear to shoulder, taking my hand and pulling it straight over to the side, but literally just a gentle tug, I'm not pulling on it. And you can notice this is staying down and I'm doing it very gently. You're looking for that first sensation of a stretch, not, oh, that feels like a really heavy stretch. If your neck is sensitive, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, repeated two or three times is enough. If you feel that you need to hold it longer, up to 30 seconds can be okay. And you definitely want to do it to both sides. Something else to note is you don't want to feel it painfully squashing on the side you're going towards. You want to feel the stretch on the opposite side. If it's squashing something that hurts in there, it means you're just pinching something and if you do it more, that will likely become painful. So see if it makes a difference if you sit more upright or if you go a little bit forwards, can you get it that you missed? Don't get that pinching. If you can't do it without causing pain on the side you're going towards, then I think you need to speak to a physio because you likely will need a different type of exercise. The next exercise is the overhead press. Now. This actually counts as a strengthening exercise because we're starting to ask muscles to work to lift our arms up. It's brilliant for the upper traps, it strengthens that and it can really release the muscle tension in that um, 
if that's causing you trouble, but it also helps to strengthen all your neck muscles as long as you keep your neck in a good posture while you're doing it. So how do we do it? You can have your hands either forwards, lifted straight up forwards, or you can have it all the way out to the side, lifted up in this position, or you can have it midway. Now, normally it is more comfortable if you're not quite out to the side and not quite forwards, but somewhere where it feels about 30 degrees forwards. You'll feel there's naturally a place where it's easiest to lift it. What position does the hands, or do the hands have to be in? If they're forwards, they can sometimes cause a bit of a pinching in the shoulder, but you can do it like that, it doesn't matter, mine feels fine when I do it like that. If they turn towards you, they're less likely to use to cause a pinching, but they can also be turned to the middle, which for me is the most comfortable position. And you can literally start by doing it without any extra weight or any resistance. So I like to make some gentle fists and I, I start there with my elbows and I just think about keeping my tummy muscles gently tucked, keeping my chin gently in, but not as much as I can, just a gentle tug, actually just growing tall. And then we're going up to the ceiling, pause for a moment and slowly back down. So it's just that movement. Now, if you can easily do 15 repetitions without feeling your shoulders coming up as you do it and things getting tight, then you've got good endurance with that. And you can do up to three sets of 15 of that. But, oh, and then you can move on to actually adding some gentle weights. You don't need to go out buying weights. You can use bottles of water, cans of fruit, or you can even get a TheraBand or exercise band and just pull that up. But if you have a really iffy neck or is really uncomfortable at the moment, I would start with only a few repetitions and see how it reacts to that. So let's say we do five repetitions, rest for 30 seconds, three sets of five. So it's literally then just slow up, pause for a moment, don't let your shoulders come up with you, bring it down slowly and just that motion. And you don't want to start slouching while you're doing that because that can actually make your shoulder hurt. So if you're feeling discomfort in your shoulder, there's a few things you can do. You can make sure you're sitting upright properly straight. That makes a big difference. Try to lift your arm when you're like that versus when you're there, makes a massive difference. Also, check if you change the position you lift it in, the angle, does that change it? And then play with the position of your hands. Does that change it? Also, you don't have to lift it all the way up. Often, if you just lift it to below shoulder height, that can make it pain-free. So start with whatever it wants to do at the start and build on that. The next exercise I'm gonna to demonstrate to you is a lovely strengthening exercise for all the muscles in the upper back that has to keep you upright during the day. So it really improves their circulation, gives them better endurance, and also helps to mobilize your upper, upper back joints. You will need an exercise band like a TheraBand or something for this. You can easily buy them off Amazon. You get packs of five with different colors. Now, the color usually means that it's a different strength. The red and the um, green are usually the easiest. The dark blue and the black ones are usually the more resistant ones. Start with the easy ones, work your way up to harder ones. Also, I've put my band through the door, so I've just made a knot in the other side and put it through the door, caught it that way. But that can really ruin your band over a time. So you can also, you'll see on Amazon, you can get these guys for really cheap. They're often included in the TheraBand packages. And what this is, is you hook this through the door. And you can do it at any level, depending on what exercise you want to do. So this bit gets caught on the other side, stops the band from pulling through, and you just loop the band through this Good, so what we want to do is you want to make sure the band is properly secured. If you're gonna start with it like that, where there's slack on the band, can you see it's not really gonna do much? So you've gotta start with it nice and um, taut already. Upright posture, not overextending, just growing tall through the top of your head. Tighten up your tummy muscles, keep that position, and slowly bring your elbows back and then slowly release them out. It's better if you start with your arms actually straighter so that you've got it all the way from there that you can pull it back and then slowly release it back in. I'm just doing it this way because it was the only way I could set my video up that I could fit everything in that I wanted to. So ideally, you want to start with your arms straighter 
and then pull them to the sides and do it like that. So we're starting with straight arms, band is taut, and we're pulling it into the sides. Pause for a moment, letting it go out slowly. Start with the easiest band you get, slow releases, work your way up to 15 repetitions. So start with three sets of five or something, depending on how difficult it is. Rest a good minute to two minutes between your sets. Once you can do three sets of 15, you've got to make it harder somehow. So either increase the resistance by shortening the band or you take a band, a user band that's got more resistance to it. Brilliant. Hope you found that useful. Now remember, if you need more help with an injury, even if it's a work-related injury, you're welcome to consult one of the team via video call. The link to our website is in the description of this video. Take care.